hope to lift, encourage, and inspire others on how to be the best versions of themselves and on how to be made in his image. If you guys are new to my channel, welcome. I'm so happy to have you. And for those of you who are already subscribed, welcome back, my sunflowers. Today, I want to talk about Tucker Car Carlson and Don Lemon. Both of them got let go on Monday around the same hour, which is crazy because I don't believe in coincidences. I believe like everything has a reason that it's done. And I feel like if we kind of look at everything and we go back to connect the dots, the dots will start connecting, if you know what I mean. We'll be like, oh, because people were saying like, oh, this is just a coincidence that they were both let go on the same day at the same hour. And these are like two of the top head anchors in the game. Don Lemon was like with CNN for like 15 plus years, I think. And Tucker Carlson, Carlson had like one of the rate, the highest rated, like he's one of the highest rated anchors on Fox News, period. You know, his show garners a whole bunch of views, like millions of views. Since his departure, you guys, they literally said that like Fox News has lost $695 million with the M, million. Okay, 695 million. That is like insane since he left. And what was even more messed up is the fact that Tucker Carlson, I can't say his name in its totality, Tucker Carlson got fired on Friday. And this came as a surprise to him because he literally was like, I'll see you Monday. See you guys Monday. And he was like eating a pizza or whatever with a uh, delivery man or whatever. Um, but he didn't even know that he was going to get let go come Monday. And then Don Lemon was messed up is that he didn't even get anybody from the network to like come to him directly and to talk to him and be like, dude, we're letting you go or whatever. They waited until both these men got done with their shifts and did what they had to do on that Friday. And they let him go Monday in the morning, which is like so messed up. And a lot of speculation and theories were surrounding the two, why they could have gotten let go. With Tucker Carlson, they were saying it could be the fact that, um, I think the girl's last name was Grossman, Amy Grossman or something like that, came forward saying that he was making a lot of misogynistic and sexist comments at work. And he was making a lot of uh, derogatory statements about like Israelis and just a lot of things that she says wasn't cool and also bringing up the fact that like a lot of the women he was him and other people they were making comments on a lot of the women who might have slept their ways to the top to get their positions that they had so um also don lemon was stated that well the things that were surrounding him was a lot of his comments that he were he was making and he even like apologized for a recent situation that had happened with him and I'll kind of get into that in a minute, but I'll go over to this first. So let's watch this. Carlson for the first time since his firing. As new and pretty ugly details merge about why Fox News got rid of its highest rated primetime star. The New York Times reports the breaking point came after Fox executives discovered startling, highly offensive, and crude private text messages from Carlson on the eve of the Dominion trial. Not long after that, uh, report dropped. Tucker Carlson posted this video on Twitter. He did not mention Fox News by name. When honest people say what's true calmly and without embarrassment, they become powerful. At the same time, the liars who've been trying to silence them shrink and they become weaker. That's the iron law of the universe. True things prevail. No mention there of the new reporting from the New York Times. That report says that the text messages that were discovered by Fox executive, executives were even worse, apparently, than those that were revealed leading up to the trial, the ones we saw in public. Apparently, there was one message that was so particularly offensive, it added to the concern at the top of the company calls for crisis in the days before they thought they were going to trial. We don't yet know what that message was, but the Wall Street Journal did report yesterday that Carlson had called a senior Fox News executive the C-word, of course, the same obscene word he used to describe Sidney Powell, that's the Trump-connected attorney and election conspiracy theorist who was a regular guest on other shows on Fox News. Here's how one of Carlson's former producers, who we should note is now suing the network, describes the culture of that show behind the scenes. Women were objectified. 
it was a game, it was a sport. Female politicians who came on the show were mocked. There were debates about who they'd rather sleep with. C-word all the time. For more on all of this, let's bring in CNN's media analyst and Axios media reporter, Sarah Fisher, CNN's anchor, senior political, uh, political analyst, John Ablon, and CNN political analyst, Natasha Alford. Thank you all for being here. This morning, I mean, this is the front page of the New York Times today saying Carlson's text ignited a crisis for Fox chiefs right before they thought they were going to trial. What struck me was though, the attorneys had these messages for months. Why did the executives not see them until the eve of that trial? Well, it could be in part because they're redacted. Well, the executives should be seeing them regardless, but the fact that they're redacted means that they're not going to come into public view. I think another crisis is you don't know when things are going to become unredacted either in the future, and so if you're leading into this trial, you see this stuff that's coming out, you're surprised by it by management, but then you're also worried that from a reputational perspective, if and when this ever does become public, you then have to deal with that crisis at a certain point, and that's where it becomes a huge risk. Uh and it might become public because John, the New York Times, Associated Press, NPR have all challenged these redactions. So, yeah, it may and, come and, out. and maybe this was a move to kind of get ahead of that. But it, it kind of boggles your mind that it was these text messages was that was the sort of straw that broke the camel's back. After all the things that Tucker Carlson had done and said, rewriting history around January 6, promoting the Great Replacement theory, um, that these must be really awful, and they yeah, must also I, go to the heart don't of something. You think, I, I mean. Fox didn't bear a cost for all of that. In fact, it gained them viewership on Tucker's show. The cost they bore was $787.5 million in the, in the settlement, you know? So they finally had to pay. They, they finally had to pay, and there's outstanding suits as well. And, and maybe they thought that firing Tucker would be a, a sign, send a signal culturally inside the organization. But, you know, there are other on-air personalities who were promoting uh, election lies a lot more loudly and consistently than Tucker Carlson. Uh, and they still have jobs right there, uh, over there right now, Maria Bartomeu in particular and, and Judge Jeanine Pirro. So uh, we'll see. They're outstanding cases. But mm -hmm. the fact that whatever was in these text messages was apparently what made the Murdochs finally decide to flip the switch, mm -hmm. that's stunning. We're not yeah. hearing last time. Just to quickly jump in on that, though, if what's in this text messages is alleging sort of misogynistic language behavior and you're facing a lawsuit from a former producer about creating an environment, a retaliatory environment of misogynistic behavior, that's when it becomes ultimately very problematic because it's not just a culture and reputational issue, it could be a legally implicating issue. But what's your sense of this? Because, I mean, we have seen Fox fire really prominent hosts before who had really good ratings. I mean, Bill O'Reilly, uh, we saw what happened with Glenn Beck as well. With Tucker now leaving, I mean, it's too soon to really know and make an honest assessment, but the ratings have been down in that hour quite a amount. And Newsmax, which is a rival to them, has saw five times a jump in their ratings. Yeah, and you can't really serve two masters, right? You have to make a decision about what the culture of an organization is going to be. And it really, it starts at leadership. We've seen leadership over at Fox News sort of abuse um, you know, abuse their power, Roger Ailes, that situation. But also it's the small things, it's the little things. And I think Abby Grossberg, when you look at some of the details of what she is accusing, it's just, it's a culture that's rife with misogyny from top to bottom. She's, so I, I think it's going to be bigger than one person's firing. She's the producer we just heard from mm -hmm. at the, the top of the show. So you think Not you know good. Which, do you really? All I know is that I don't... I mean, First some people, when, when they get into a place of power, they just kind of feel like that, oh, I, I'm untouchable, I'm untouchable. You know, I don't know if that's the case with Tucker. I don't, I can't speak from a character standpoint, so it's kind of hard for me to say. But based off what he was saying, those things are really rude things, especially if you're making people feel, you know, very inappropriate at the workplace. No one should have to go to work and, you know, feel like they're not in a safe environment or they shouldn't have to be you know, dealing with that at work, it should be a professional setting, you know, and you're entitled to feel how you want to feel, but there's certain things that you should just keep to yourself. There's certain things that you just should not say. So, um, what's done in the dark will always come to the light. And I think that's exactly what's happening now. Um, I know some people may have like certain narratives or certain types of opinions on it. And, you know, I would like to know what you guys have to say down below respectfully, please. Um, but also like Don Lemon, he was let go, as we know, and he he was under fire before because he had said something about 
women should not be paid more. I think he was referring to soccer. He was saying like men's soccer players should be paid way more than women should be paid because the men are way more entertaining than the women. And so like comments like that where it does sound a little bit sexist or you may come across a certain type of way, those things are getting people fired. Like you can't say and do things like that. It's not cool. And you know, it just... It's catching up to people. That's what's really going on. It's just catching up to people, whether you have a big name or or not, whether you bring in a lot of ratings or not. These companies are like, look, we have to let you guys go. Like, we could get sued for the things that you guys are saying. Um, and Don Lemon also referred to someone as um, being in her prime. So it was, I forget what her name was, but I think her name was Caitlin or something. You guys, if you know what I'm talking about, you guys can let me know. But he basically had stated on one of his morning shows that he felt like a woman was past her prime already and that he considers women in their 20s, 30s, and 40s to be in their prime. And one of his co-hosts was basically saying like, please clarify what you mean by that. Are you meaning by chair bearing years prime? Or are you talking about in her prime to be a president? And he was like, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just stating facts. So... Things like that, he had to be off the show for like three days after that. And then he like apologized through a tweet or something like that. And then he was able to come back. And now, um, I know there was a clip of him where he was, I guess, getting on the people who was talking to him in his ear. He was like, "I I like I would like to ask the questions, but I can't if you guys keep talking to me every minute in my ear. Like, please stop. And he just like snapped, you know what I mean? And I just feel like he's not going to go quietly. So these two guys, there's going to be more stuff being revealed, whether in their favor or against them. I don't know, but we're definitely like, I just know that this is just the tip of the iceberg and that more will be revealed in due time. So prayers to everyone involved. I just hope that, you know, truth will prevail. Everything that is done in the dark will come to the light. And if there's evil people involved at play or foul Foul things are going on behind closed doors. Let that be revealed in the name of Jesus. And I thank you guys so much for watching with me. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day.